Anthropic just put out Claude Sonnet as well as Claude Code. In this video, I wanted to go and show you what Claude Code looks like. Right now, at time of recording, Claude Code is in a limited research preview, and what it allows you to do is, as they describe in, it enables developers to delegate substantial engineering tasks to Claude directly from their terminal. First up, to get started, it is super straightforward. Just make sure that you do have adequate hardware. You do have a recent version of Node.js installed. All that you have to do is you can run through the installation steps, authenticate your account with the Anthropic API, and one thing to note is you will have to have some credits on your Anthropic account for all of this to work. When you do go through the authentication steps, you will go through the OAuth flow and be directed directly into the Claude interface. So I wouldn't be surprised if there is or is shortly gonna be a way on how you can implement this with GCP as well as AWS as well, which this model is also hosted on. The other thing to note, which I think a lot of people will probably ask about is how much will this cost? I'm starting this with a balance of $3.22. We'll see how far this gets us. First up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a terminal. I am going to be using this within Cursor because I do want to demonstrate how you can leverage this within an AI IDE like Cursor if you're interested. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new Next.js project. I'm going to create it within this Sonnet 3.5 folder. I'm going to go ahead and select all of the settings for the project. And then once that's all installed, I'm going to open it up. I'm just going to go ahead and bun dev and start our development server. Now that we have that running, I'm just going to open up a new terminal and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here. Once you have it all installed, what you'll be able to do is you can go ahead and just run the command Claude. And then within here, you'll see Claude code may read files in this folder. Reading untrusted files may lead to Claude code to behave in unexpected ways. With your permission, Claude code may execute files in this folder. Executing untrusted code is unsafe tips for getting started. You can run init, that's going to create a claude.md file, and that's going to be instructions that you can feed into Claude. That's going to be something that looks to be similar to cursor rules, if you are familiar with that, which are essentially additional customizable instructions that you can have. But in this case, I'm just going to leave it blank. Now you can also set up the terminal setup command for terminal integration. You can ask Claude questions about your code base, and then you can ask Claude to implement changes for your code base. What I'm going to do is say, I want to create a landing page for my brand developers digest. I want it to look professional as well as have a dark theme with blue and purple linear gradient accents. Now we see that it is cooking and what it's doing, if I just expand the terminal a little bit here, we can see that it's going through and it's reading a number of the different file paths here. So here we see it went into the page.tsx, it went into the global.css, it went into the Tailwind config, and now I'll update these files to create your landing page for Developers Digest with a dark theme and a blue-purple gradient with accents. First, let's update the global.css to add your dark theme and gradient colors. Here we see that it's going in and it's adding in some colors for us. Now I have the prompt where it's asking me to accept these edits. And I can also say, yes, don't ask again in this session. Continuing on, we see that it made some updates to the layout.tsx and that is also even creating a logo. So while it is moseying, let's just take a look at our API credits. Let's go and refresh this. And I started with $3.22 and I'm down to $3.08. Here is our website. So we have this purple and dark theme. It is a very presentable website. So it probably arguably looks like it was created or generated with AI. There are some subtle things that are a bit off like developers digest up here. If I go and look at the mobile view, for instance, we can see that it looks pretty good for a first pass with not much direction it did what I think is a pretty good job. Now that we have this, even though I have our development server open here, the interesting thing with the application is it can also run your development server. I'll go and stop my server. And what I'm gonna say here is yes, and don't ask to run NPM commands in this directory again. I'm gonna allow it to run that for us. Now we see that it's puttering and it's taking a couple of seconds here. One thing that I do want to mention is the cost. So this model, this 3.7 Sonnet model is the same cost as Sonnet 3.5. Now, one thing to note with this is if I head on over to artificial analysis and I look at the prices at time of recording, this is the second most expensive model that is out there. That is second to 01 right now. That's just something to be mindful of is even though the results are very good, 
is you are definitely going to be paying a premium price for that. But if you are looking for the Frontier model for coding, this is definitely going to be it right now. All right, so we see it spun up the development server and then it gave us a brief of effectively all the different changes that it had. The organized sections, we have the header, we have the footer, so on and so forth. Now let's try something a little bit more interesting. Now just for demonstration's sake, so I'm going to say I want to create a page with a number of classic arcade games. Let's create the overall theme of each game to match the branding of the overall site. Let's create Pac-Man, Frogger, as well as Pipe Train. If you haven't played Pipe Train before, it is a really great game from 1991. This is one of the first computer games that I played. Now, while it's working through, what we can do is we can go and look within some of the edits that we have here. Now we see it created this games directory and we have this Pac-Man cover image, which doesn't actually exist. But we also have this logo that it created where it created the developer's digest text. And if we take a look within games, we can see some of the different pages that it started to make here. If I take a look at Pipe Dream, we, we have a good 263 lines of code within here. Within Pac-Man, we have a page for Pac-Man within here. And then finally, we have a page for Frogger as well. It's going to be interesting to see how well this works, if at all. While it's continuing to work through this, let's just take a look at the console here. We're down to $2.25. We've used about a dollar for our application so far. Now, if I go over to the games tab, we see that we have these three different pages and we also have game controls. It even added this section without asking. We have the arrow keys and then we also have these game tips here. If I go and click Pac-Man, for instance, I see what looks to be like a pretty respectable little area for the game here. Let's just go and start the game. Now I see that the game didn't quite start, but in terms of just the components themselves and these little SVGs, it is a pretty decent layout, I have to say. We also have this score here. We have the ability to click full screen. Now, mind you, these don't quite work. Now, if you look here, this actually has been running for quite some time. This has been running for about six minutes by the looks of it. Now it looks like it's created the arcade section for the Games Developers Digest. Here's where we built a main landing page, a games hub showcasing three classic arcade games, individual games for Pac-Man, Frogger, as well as Pipe Dream. This maintains the consistency of the branding. The games are representative with placeholder visuals and scripts that could be replaced with the actual game implementations. Now let's implement the games in full and I'll let this run for a little while and then we'll circle back here. All right, so now after running about for another five minutes or so, we see you've successfully implemented three fully functional arcade games for Developers Digest, each with their own unique gameplay and designed to match the dark theme with the blue purple gradient accents. First up is Pac-Man, a classic maze navigation game, features power pellets as well as complete score tracking, level progression, and multiple lives. And then we also have Pipe Dream. Now let's take a look at each of these games here. So we have Pac-Man, we have Frogger, and then we have Pipe Dream. I do see some errors here. I see that there's a hydration error, and then there's also a error with setting the text content. If I just take a look at this, there are some errors on each of these pages, but if I just take a quick look at these, these look like they're going in the right direction. While these don't quite work yet, with just three rounds of using this Claude Code terminal interface, I got pretty far. I was able to create this landing page. I was able to create these three different game pages and also have these game stats as well as how to play. It has the starting portion on where you can actually implement and put in the game. And then finally, it actually has some decent canvases for what each of the games look like. Here we have the canvas for Pac-Man. This is a canvas for Frogger. And if I go over to Pipe Dream, we have the starting implementation for Pipe Dream. We even have the different pipe types here. Just to give you an idea, in terms of how much this costs, we're down to $1.21. Basically $2 is what it costs us to generate what we have so far. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and I'm going to pivot over to Cursor. You will be able to access this within Chat, Composer, and also use it with the new agent that they have as well. What I'm going to do within here is I'm going to restart each of the pages and grab the errors that we had for each page. Here for the Pac-Man page, we, we have this event listener error. I'm going to paste that in here. Frogger, we had this series of errors. And then finally for Pipe Dream, we have these series of errors. I'm going to send this in and let this agent determine the next step. If you haven't used the cursor agent before, 
it's very similar to this Claude code terminal agent, except it is directly built into the IDE here. Arguably, it does a lot of these similar things, such as searching the different files, trying to determine the next steps, as well as also editing and implementing and creating new files, similar to what we just saw within Claude code there. But how it looks within cursor, it is a really nice UX. Personally, and this could just be a personal taste thing, but I personally do like this composer view. I do like the visibility of all of this here. When using the Claude Code Terminal tool, it does work really well. It's pretty hands off. It doesn't quite give the same polish feel as composer, where I can see all of the different pieces where it's going through page by page, and it's updating the different pieces here. Here we see that it grabbed the code base, it created these different scripts for all of the different games. And now if I look through what is in here within Pac-Man, it created what looks to be all of the different code. Just for Pac-Man itself, this is almost 600 lines of code here. This is all that was generated for Pipe Dream. If I go down here, that's almost a thousand lines of code. And then finally for Frogger, if I go down here, that is almost 800 lines of code. I just want you to keep that in mind for the first $2 that I spent. That was effectively thousands of lines of complicated code that Claude generated for us for $2. Now that I have a handful of more errors, what I can do here is I can just go and grab some more context and specify all of the different errors that we have within here. It's definitely struggling a little bit with our task, but mind you, we did throw a lot at it. It doesn't seem like any of the games are quite working yet. The one big difference with cursor is going to be the billing. So instead of being directly billed with the API from Anthropic, Arguably, you are going to be able to get quite a bit further with Cursor. It is $20 a month for the subscription, but depending on the usage, if you really try and push your limits with Cursor, you probably are going to be better off than trying to use the Claude API directly. Now let's just try it with some simple examples. Create a stunning SaaS landing page here. Here we see it generating all of the code for us. One of the things that I noticed here is even with a simple instruction like create a stunning SaaS landing page, it did generate a good chunk of code for us here. And based from the games that we asked it to generate, it generated thousands of lines of code with just those simple instructions. That's just something to be mindful of, especially if you're using the API. Now let's take a look at our Sassify landing page here. Transform your business with our SaaS solution. We have these nice colors here. We even have this pricing page. We even have these photos, which is an interesting touch because that is something that LLMs used to break. When you'd put in an image, it would show a dead path but it is using images from Unsplash. That is interesting to have those within the generation. And then we have a really nice footer as well. But overall, in terms of the UI, this is something that definitely stands out. It does look quite good just for very simple instructions. Now let's try another generation. Let's send in, generate me a perfect clone of Minecraft with extremely good detail. Here we see we have this Minecraft clone. We have a ton of different styling that it's generating. We have the body, we have the crosshair, we have inventory. We see that it is going to be leveraging some CDNs here. It's going to be using 3JS by the looks of it, as well as setting up some of the logic within here. We have the initialization function and a bunch of other assets here. We even have textures that is loading from GitHub. We see it's generating the height and the blocks, and it's just continuing to go through here. It doesn't seem like it will hesitate to really just go for it and try and generate whatever you're trying to do. Here we have 450 lines of code. And again, it did generate reasonably quick for one of these larger language models. Here we go, loading Minecraft clone. And let's take a look, drum roll. All right, look at this. Wow, this is amazing. There are some textures it needs to fill in, but other than that, we basically have a starting point to Minecraft with just one prompt. The last thing that I want to point you towards is even if you don't want to pay for the API or you don't want to pay for cursor right now, you will be able to access Sonnet 3.7 within the Claude.ai web app. And the really great thing with this is you can now access your GitHub repositories directly within the Claude interface. As soon as you authenticate with GitHub, you'll be able to see your different projects here. And what's great with this is you can select 
the different pieces of context that you want to put within the web app. It will even show you the capacity that you have left for the context window. But otherwise, that's pretty much it for this video. I wanted to show you what Claude Code looked like as well as Sonnet and just point you in a few different directions on how you can leverage this new Sonnet 3.7 model. Let me know your thoughts. What are you going to be building with this? How do you find it in terms of other models that you've been using? Do you think it's worth the cost? I'm curious to hear your thoughts about the models. But otherwise, if you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.